Next up, we have Nikki Thompson Frazier. Nikki considers herself a mompreneur. In 2015, she opened Sweet Encounter, initially an online and wholesale bakery, specializing in quality gluten desserts because both her daughters have food allergies. Since the pandemic, Nikki pivoted and offered virtual and in-person cooking classes for all ages. I'm gonna have to take some of those. She also offers corporate team building cooking classes. So worksite wellness teams, take note. She offers corporate team cooking classes. In 2021, she won Lansing Built to Bit Last Business Competition, allowing her to open her first storefront in Lansing, Michigan on February uh, 16th, 2022, this year. She now offers uh, gluten-free treats, eats, and cooking classes for all ages. Nikki has won several business and baking competitions. One of her proudest accomplishments is competing on Food Network's Bakers versus Bakers. Um, and prior to starting her business, she uh, was a director for a nonprofit. Now, Nikki is uh, her business, Sweet Encounters. It's located here in the capital city. It's downtown. It's in the old Naps building. So if you're ever in the area or if you live in the area, definitely check out Sweet Encounters with Nikki. Nikki, thank you for being here. Thank We're excited you. to have You're you. Welcome. It is all yours. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And thank you for the nice well wishes in the chat. I saw them come up, but of course, I couldn't type back. But thank you all so much. I appreciate that. I am happy to be here at your conference with you as we recharge and reset, right, and refocus ourselves. Uh, and we always need to do that because there's so much happening in our lives that we always need to take time to kind of refocus. So I'm going to talk to you guys about healthy eating. So I hope you guys got the recipe card. Uh, it's a really simple but fun uh, dish. And really with these spring rolls, you can get creative. You can put shrimp in it. You can not do meat. We talked about how you can make meat your side dish. So if you saw, I have my little notes here. But if you read it down below where it says being plant forward, just talking about how, you know, this could be your main dish, right? And you can have the meat on the side. So, but meat is still good. Protein is still good. But you can balance that with all these healthy fruits. I know we're, we all are old enough to remember that thing of um, let's eat the rainbow, right? So it's so important to eat the rainbow. So today we're going to have colorful things. We have our peppers, all these different colors. Um, I unfortunately could not find a ripe mango. I probably should have gotten one last week and then uh, waited a while in order to let it ripen. So, but, so we don't, I don't have a mango, but if you have one, that's great. Because the thing about this recipe is that you really can put whatever you want in it. That's the cool thing. And I like some people, they come to my cooking classes, is that you are the chef. So you literally can make it however you want. Right, so if you don't like mint leaves, I have mint leaves here. Or if you don't like cilantro, I have some people who are actually allergic to cilantro. Nikki, um, so I, I, I want to make sure everybody in the space is muted, and it might be some noise in your background that is disrupting your voice. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Hold on for just a second. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. Hopefully that's better. I apologize. Um, I'm actually in my, in my store. So we're right here in the action of everything. So like I was saying, it's so important for us to reset, recharge, right? Refocus and eating the rainbow. That's the wonderful thing about uh, cooking is that you can eat the rainbow. And I have encouraged my kids to eat the rainbow all the time. So like I was saying, we have all of our fresh fruits and vegetables right here. And we're going to get started cutting them up. So I made my quinoa in advance. It's over here because we're going to put quinoa in here. But if you don't like quinoa, you can use rice. If you don't like brown rice, it's actually a great alternative. But one of the things I tell people about quinoa is that I usually make it with 
if you're plant-based then you could use um, veggie broth, but if, or you can use a chicken broth as opposed to water, it gives it more flavor. You can actually add a little bit of lemon, a little bit of salt and pepper, some seasoning, some garlic, that gives it some flavor in your quinoa. So there's a lot of different ways to kind of flavor that quinoa, because quinoa is kind of bland, I'll be honest, but there's ways to spice it up without having to add a bunch of extra like calories or, you know, unhealthy stuff into it, right? So there's ways to be able to spice it up. So those are some different ideas that you can do when you're making your quinoa. Uh, you can always add a little tad of butter or olive oil or something like that as well if you want to. So those are some, some different ways to do that. So we are going to cut up our vegetables. And like I said, it's all about eating the rainbow. So when you're eating the rainbow, it's finding those colorful things that you can add to your dish. And one of the great ways to do that is literally using different peppers. So if you like peppers, this is the perfect thing because you have red, yellow, green, and you can get colorful with it. And all the different colors actually have different vitamins and nutrients that, right, that help our body from you know, vitamin C, vitamin K, vitamin E, all these different things that are really working in our bodies. And um, I'm all about, you know, eating healthy and taking my vitamins. But really, if we eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, then we don't have to, you know, supplement so much with, you know, all these other um, additives, right, that we add into our diet sometimes or a lot of, um, a lot of things like that. So we're going to get these cut up. And like I was saying, I have cilantro right here. I also have my mint leaves. I love mint. I feel like it just kind of ups the ante for everything. But if you don't like mint, you can try basil. Basil is really good as an alternative. So there's a lot of different things that you can do to switch it up and make it your own. Because like I was saying, when you're the chef, you get to do it your way. So that's the cool thing. And that's what I tell my kids, because you might have kids or picky eaters, somebody in your household, and they're like, I don't like that, I don't like this. You know what? If you make it yourself, you can make it the way you like. So there we go, solves that problem. So in addition to, you know, eating our fruits and vegetables, right? Five, at least five cups of fruits and vegetables a day. What are some ways that you reset and recharge? And you can put those and refocus, and you can put those in the chat because I see them popping up and I can talk about them as I'm sitting here cutting. But there's so many different um, tools that we can use, but one really is feeding our bodies. The first thing is so important is to feed our bodies because when we don't feed our bodies, we're tired, we're cranky, and um, we don't perform our best. We don't focus as well, right? So focus is an issue when we don't eat well. So there's so many different reasons why we should be feeding our body and feeding the rainbow because it's so colorful anyway, right? So add some color to your life. So I don't see anything yet. Maybe you guys are cutting like me, but I'd love to see some of your suggestions. I'm gonna definitely give some of mine in terms of ways that not just finding healthy things to eat, but also finding other ways that I can really kind of just get my body in a better place because I'm really busy. I'm sure you guys are too. We're doing things all the time, right? We're something to everybody. So how do we make sure that we make time for ourselves? How do we make sure that we feed ourselves um, and not just the physical nutri nutrients, but other ways? So one of the things that I do is I do a 10 minute yoga. So I don't know if you, someone says, um, the noise in the back is bad. Okay, I'm sorry. I think hopefully we get that taken care of um, with the noise. I'm sorry. Love eating the rainbow. I tried to incorporate lots of color, yes, and walking every day. So one of the things um, some of you guys may have, smartwatches, things like that, so setting yourself, oh, I love the Calm app, setting yourself like a timer, especially if you're back in the office working again, or even if you're at home, setting yourself a timer for every hour to get up, just to get up, right? For at least a minute, two minutes. Sometimes we're like, I don't have time, I don't have time. But once we actually feed our body what it needs, our body's gonna give us even more of what we need to make it through the day. So that's why I say you really have to make the time. So I, yeah, I do my 10 minutes of yoga. And the other night I did my yoga at like nine o'clock at night <laughs> for 10 minutes. I actually fell asleep on the floor. My husband had to come wake me up. But you know what? I felt so much better. I did. I slept well the night that night. 
Um, so just giving yourselves those little permissions to do that. Okay, so let me get to cooking here. So I got this stuff nicely cut up and you can cut up your mango, you can cut up your fruit like I have here. Um, and then, like I said, I already have my quinoa made up and then hopefully you guys have your rice paper. I have my rice paper here and we can start to put together our, um, our spring roll. We can start putting it together and seeing how it comes together here. So um, this is just rice paper. Again, everything I do is gluten-free. Um, it's because my kids have food allergies and there are some benefits for many people. Some people, you might have chronic migraines or maybe you have inflammation in your body and that might be because of gluten. It may or may not be, but it's always interesting because some people I know who started coming to me say, oh my gosh, when I started eating gluten-free, the inflammation in my body resolved or I don't have migraines anymore. So there may be some things that are happening in your body that might you know, uh, be, affected, be affected by what you eat, what you put into your body. Because many times what we put into our body, um, when we have all these other symptoms and things happening, a lot of it is what we put into our bodies. Um, and we don't always think about that initially, but a lot of things can be also healed by what we put in our bodies, right? So I have some hot water right here. I got my tongs, but I also have some chopsticks somewhere. Oh, here they are. I got some chopsticks as well. So um, you can use chopsticks or if you want to use some tongs and I literally hold on to the paper and I put it into my hot water for just about 10 seconds and I kind of flip it both ways because it likes to kind of turn um, and fold and you want it to try to stay as much of a circle as possible. So I'm going to put that back into a nice circle right here on my board. And I like to do one at a time. Uh, you can do them all at once and then start to build it, but I like to just take one, build, one, build, just because this rice paper can be so finicky. Um, so now I have my nice little circle here, and you can like put your mint leaves in here if you want. If you want some cilantro, um, cilantro has a lot of really, really great health benefits. It helps with your heart. Um, so it's, it helps with uh, your cardiovascular system, so it's really good. Um, and I just, I like the smell. I like the smell of fresh herbs. So, and again, like I said, this is a great one. You can put basil in it as well. So I'm just pulling my herbs off and I'm just taking the leaves, so not the stems. I'm gonna put some of my fresh veggies in here and just line it up and make it look nice and pretty. So here we go. And I'm sorry about that noise initially. Okay. And then I'm gonna just take some of my quinoa some of my quinoa in here. Now you don't want to fill it up too much because it's going to be hard for you to close. <laughs> okay, so you want to make sure that you have some space right here. You can pull this too. It has a little bit of elasticity. You don't want to pull too much, but this has some elasticity. You see how I'm pulling that right there? I'm going to pull it up here. Now, if you want to leave it open face, you can, or you can close it up. And then you're literally just going to roll it. Get your nice little roll here. I mean, here we go. So pretty, so nice, very simple. Now let's talk about our sauce, okay? We're gonna talk about what we're gonna do for our sauce. Now, I'm a peanut-free family because my kids have food allergies, so I use almond butter, but you can use peanut butter, you can use um, sunflower, I think it's like sunflower butter, you can use any of that. But I'm using, I'm using almond. Um, peanut butter is what's traditional. So, you, you know, it's up to you. So I have my butter already here. And then I'm going to add in my different things. So I added a little bit of maple syrup because it's going to give it a little bit of sweetness. Now, if you don't want to use maple syrup, which use pure maple syrup, don't use the pancake syrup, use the pure maple syrup, um, which is really good for you as well. Or you can use agave, you can use honey, you can use any type of sweetener. Or if you don't want a sweetener, you don't have to have a sweetener at all. It is nice to have a little bit of a sweetness to it. But again, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. But there are alternatives. Agave is really good. It's low on spiking up your insulin. So that's a good alternative if you, you know, have issues with your insulin or diabetes. Um, agave is a really good alternative for a sweetener. So I have 
my maple. So I'm gonna just pour a little bit of that in there. And we're gonna do some soy sauce. So soy sauce, you wanna make sure if you are gluten-free that you find the soy sauce that is gluten-free. There are gluten-free soy sauces out there. So I'm gonna put some soy sauce in here as well. And the soy sauce also has the salt factor in it. I usually get reduced sodium just because I feel like the regular soy sauce is just a little too much for me. But um, if you want, you can you know use the regular. So it's kind of, again, up to you. But the low sodium, I think, is completely fine. So we are going to mix this up right here nicely and keep mixing. All right, get it nicely mixed together. We also are gonna add a little bit of our chili powder. And then we are going to um, use some fresh lime right here. Now, for our fresh lime, you can zest. Like, I love the zest of a lime or lemon, anything I like to zest. And so this is my microplane. I love this thing. I use it for everything. So you can go ahead and do a little bit of this. And then you can roll it. So if you roll it, you roll it really nicely. And when you roll it, it makes it easier to squeeze. So we're going to roll it, roll it, roll it so it's nice and soft. Yes. So we're gonna roll, 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 and then we're gonna give it a nice little squeeze right here, and we're gonna cut it. Ah, well, not like that. We're gonna cut it like this, um, and then we're gonna squeeze some of this in there. I'm gonna go and grab, um, wash my hands after I squeeze this, and I'll be right back with you. Um, but yeah, you wanna squeeze as much of that in there as you want. It tastes really good, and that lime helps it kind of up the ante and give it some extra flavor. Okay, all right, so now we're going to get this right here mixed up together, and then we can be able to enjoy it with our yummy, yummy roll. So, have any of you guys ever made like a peanut sauce at home before? Seven minutes, okay, yes, okay, I'm reading the notes here. So has anybody ever made a peanut sauce? Do you like the peanut sauce? Is there anything that you put in it that I don't put in it that you might like? Is there anything at all? Let's see. I have, and it's so good. <laughs> it is so good. And it's also healthy too, because peanut, peanut butter, peanuts, especially if you use the all natural. So I choose to buy the all natural kind because the all natural doesn't have all the extra sugar and all the extra ingredients in it. So the all natural is great. Oh, cayenne. Well, you know, that's basically, do you use that? I'm assuming the cayenne as opposed to using the chili. Because if you use cayenne pepper and you use the chili sauce, whew, that's probably pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also cayenne has great benefits too for our health, as you probably already know. It helps to reduce our blood pressure. So there are definite benefits to using spice in our food. And you only have to actually use a little bit and still get that benefit of it. Um, other things that are good, like turmeric, um, if you ever make a milkshake or a smoothie or something like that, make a smoothie, probably better. But you can actually put a little bit of turmeric powder, not a lot put a little bit in there every day and it's actually really, really good for you. So there's a lot of research where um, people in the Middle East use a lot of turmeric, as you probably know, in their foods. And so they have a lower rate of cancer and other diseases. Can you believe that? Because again, of what they put into their bodies. So it's so important for us to make sure that we are thinking about what we put into our bodies, that we are 
making sure that we give our bodies opportunity to recharge, refresh, right, refocus. And so eating things like this, it's a great thing you can take to work, you can eat it um, in between a quick Zoom meeting, right? So it's totally delicious. I also want to eat it right now, but I'm not so I'm talking to you. But um, I can just walk you through again if you want me just to show you really quickly. But literally, you just take this paper and you just dip it in that water. So can you see a day ahead? Oh, yes, absolutely. Someone said yes. You can definitely make these a day ahead. Put them in the refrigerator. Um, you can eat them cold. You don't really have to eat them warm. But really, you can put them in your lunch, and then they'll get room temperature by the time it's lunchtime. Because everything you're putting in here is all you know, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, right? So it's not stuff that's really going to go bad. Um, the sauce, of course, you can have on the side. You keep that refrigerated. Yeah. But really, um, these things you can make a couple of days in advance. They keep for a couple of days. So it's really good. Just wrap them in like an airtight container. It makes it perfect. Um, give it to your kids, especially if your kids are like kind of picky eaters. Find the vegetables that they like. Like my kids love mango. That's why I put mango in there. And my kids love uh, corn. So they also love zucchini in the summertime. So if you're like me and you plant zucchini and you have tons of zucchini, zucchini is also really good too. You can put zucchini in there, carrots. Um, you can put uh, cucumbers if you like cucumbers. I know that my kids love cucumbers. So I try to find things that they like and then incorporate that into it. And you can make a total fruit one where you could do... Um, you could do, uh, what was I going to say, apples, like sliced apples, slap your apples, like kind of like uh, matchsticks. And you can slice those apples and you can put apples in there because apples and peanut butter pair well together. So, and then you can sneak a little bit of herbs in there for them because the herbs are good for them. So you can sneak that into the, into the, uh, the spring roll or into your husband. Because my husband, I try to sneak fruits and vegetables into what he's eating too. So where do you find these in the store? So you have to go to an Asian store. I have not really found these like at a Meyer or something like that. Meyer might carry them, but I don't, I'm not sure if they do or not. I usually just go to an Asian market. So there is um, one, if you guys are familiar with Fresh Time, and uh, I think everybody's probably all over the state, right? But um, in Lansing or East Lansing, there's a Fresh Time by the university. And there is an Asian market that's right over there by Fresh Time. Um, so, but there's, there's Asian markets everywhere. Just Google Asian market and you want the rice paper. And if you show them the picture from the recipe card, they'll be able to give it to you. Like, no problem. Just say, I want something like this and they'll find it for you. You can use like the, um, egg, uh, what is it called? Egg roll, um, paper, but the egg roll paper is not gluten-free. And, um, this is really, I mean, healthy. It's literally just rice and water. So it's really, really good for you. Somebody said Amazon. Yes, you can. Amazon is my friend. I, I have Amazon Prime. So I ship Amazon all over the place. I mean, I ship things from Amazon all over the place. So, um, egg roll wraps. Yes. Um, that's what I said. Yeah, they aren't as healthy. That's right. Um, but you can use them sometimes. That is true. So this is a better alternative and really it still tastes good. Right? It still tastes good. It doesn't have much flavor to it, but it holds everything together nicely and it tastes good. So you can't go wrong with that. Um, so yes, yeah, so you guys were telling me some things that you do. I saw people say that they, they walk uh, to get recharged. Some people saying they did yoga. I saw that too. Um, so those are all great ways. Somebody said the, the Calm app. If you don't know about the Calm app, I would highly recommend the Calm app. I will try these and let Rhonda know what I thought. Okay, got it. Um, but I would highly recommend it. So not only is the Calm app good because it has like a daily meditation that's 10 minutes, but they also have things for nighttime. So for instance, um, is a, yes, it is a life charge. So for instance, they have different like kind of um, series with different like famous people that give a series about different ways to kind of meditate and refocus your life and things like that. But they also have bedtime stories and they have like nice calming music. So for example, my kids love um, the Calm app. There's times when they can't go to sleep, you know, they're just super energized, right? And I do like one of the bedtime stories, one of the meditations and the Calm app for them. They have kid friendly ones. It works perfectly. And even for me, sometimes when I'm like, you know, we've had a long day, we're really tired, but for some reason we just can't go to sleep. I know I'm not the only one that that happens to. 
So what I do is I turn on that Calm app and I find some type of meditation. And I tell you, within five, 10 minutes, I am like gone. And it's still playing in the background. <laughs> and my husband used to turn it off for me, but it really, really helps. So whatever that is for you, find that thing that really just kind of calms you and settles you down. Uh, you know, when I, I will admit that when my kids were younger, I gave them like uh, melatonin because my friends said, oh, give your kid melatonin to help them sleep. And I stopped because I realized that, you know, doing meditation apps and things like that was a more natural way for our bodies because our bodies really do want to reset. They really, really do want to recharge. And so it's finding those natural ways to be able to do that so that not, I mean, if you have to use melatonin, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying, try this other thing first and see if that works for you. Um, and so when I tried those things with my kids, I found that they worked. And so now we use those things um, as opposed to using the melatonin. So uh, does anyone have any other tips or tricks that they use for bedtime? Nikki, there's a question in the uh, uh, the chat, and then move. Go ahead, go ahead, Rhonda. It said, okay, these chat is moving now that people are asking. Somebody's saying they can't um, eat grains, or I lost it this quick. No longer eating grains. Eat grains. There you go. Did you see it? No, I'm sorry, I can't see it. Yeah, as as people put. Uh, comments in it moves before I can read it. Okay, let me see, Kathy. Okay, I'm no longer I'm eating grains or added, added sugar. sugar. My recommendations. recommendations. Okay, so I, I, it, it went away really quickly, but it's ever since that I'm no longer eating grains or natural, I mean, or sugars. And then what was the question? I'm any sorry. recommendations? Egg oh. wrap. Yeah, any any recommendations? Yes. yes. So, so if you're not doing sugar, again, agave is great. I love agave. It does not spike up your insulin like sugar does. Um, it's even better than honey, honestly, in terms of in terms of the insulin response. So agave is really good. A G V uh, A V V E. Sorry, I can't even spell. Um, but agave is a really good natural sweetener. Um, if you're baking something and you want like a, a substitute, then it's um, xylitol is the, is the sugar, and you can find that at like. Um, probably on Amazon. Again, everybody's in different places, but here locally, there's a place called Better Health and you can find it there. You can probably find it at Whole Foods too, if there's a Whole Foods near you, but um, those are good for, for natural substitutes. Um, and then you're saying you're no longer eating grains. So I would say, you know, you can use um, almond flour. Almond flour is a great substitute. I love almond flour. So, you know, if you're making something and you can use that because it's nut-based. So finding some like nut-based alternatives um, is a good source as well, as opposed to using different grains. Uh, I'm trying to think of what are some other things. But yeah, those are some, some of my go-tos that I do because I try to switch things up so that I am not always having a lot of, you know, rice products or different things like that. That's why I do like the quinoa, which is a brain, but I do like the quinoa and things like that just to kind of switch it up and add some variety. Does anyone else have any questions? There's another question in the, uh, the chat. I love cream-based soups like corn chowder but I need to use dairy-free milk alternative. What can you recommend for soups? With that, use coconut milk. Coconut milk is creamy and it's good and it has that good fat to it. And um, you can use that and it's gonna give you that creamy flavor that the uh, heavy cream gives you. So that's a good alternative. Another thing that you could do is that, um, this is not as healthy um, as using the corn, uh, the, the coconut, but you can take a little bit of um, like rice milk and alternative milk, almond milk, something like that, 
and you can add a little bit of cornstarch to thicken it. That way it gives you that kind of thickness of the heavy cream and you add it into your soups. But honestly, I think the best solution is using that coconut milk. It's really good. It adds that creamy flavor to it. Um, as long as you don't have issues with coconut, I think that's a great alternative. Actually, I use that for some of our vegan in the store. We do offer vegan soups. And so I use that for some of our vegan soups. Oat milk, yes, that is right, thank you. Yes, oat milk, I do like oat milk. I didn't think of that initially because some people um, who have gluten allergies, um, sometimes oat uh, doesn't always bode well with their bodies, but oat milk is definitely a good one and it's very creamy. I actually like oat milk better than almond and soy, in my opinion, I really like oat milk. And someone said soak and blanch, yes, cashews is definitely another way to create that creaminess as well. And you can use cashews as substitutes and things like if you're making um, cheesecake, you can actually, that same method, like you said, soak in those cashews. You can use that also to make uh, cheeses. People use that to make cheeses and you use what's called nutritional wheat, um, nutritional yeast, I'm sorry, nutritional yeast. I apologize, I'm saying all kind of wrong words here, but nutritional yeast, the yeast, um, and it's not like the yeast that we use for our bread, but it's called nutritional yeast. And you can add that in um, with, those, uh, with those soaked nuts and it creates a nice um, kind of cheesy flavor. If you're kind of missing cheese or you wanna find a cheese substitute, you can make your own cheese doing that. Um, so that's the way with the almonds and then with the nutritional yeast. So yes, any other questions, Rhonda? Let me see, I am looking through the chat. I don't see anything unless I'm missing it. You know, sometimes these chats will move questions forward and you don't get to see it. If someone didn't get their question answered, please put it yeah, in. Please send the questions. Do you have a recommendation for cooking the spring rolls if you want it cooked? So, um, no. I mean, you can, I mean, the only other thing is, I mean, you could fry them. Um, there, I, I've never baked them before, so I'm not really sure how well they would work baked. Um, what is the best type of oil to use? Uh, air fryer. You could put it in an air fryer um, if you want kind of a crispiness to it. I don't, but I, honestly, I've never done that before, so I can't really get it. Now I'm thinking I'm going to go home and try it because <laughs> I have an air fryer. I'm going to go home and try it. But when I use air fryers, somebody asked about oils, I use olive oil. Olive oil or grapeseed oil is really good as well. So getting some of those healthier oils, so much better for your body. Your body will respond to your, you know, to doing that much better. Grapeseed oil is really good. It's expensive. It's more it's pricier, um, but it is a really good oil and you don't have to use a lot of it. That's the thing. A lot of times we think we're making stuff. We have to use a lot of oil. Even when we're sautéing vegetables, Really like a tablespoon is probably the most avocado oil. Yes, it does have a high smoke point. That is very true. So avocado oil is very good as well. Because grapeseed does not have as high of a smoke content as avocado oil. So yes, that is definitely another good suggestion. <coughs> Excuse me. And talk about avocados. You actually can put some avocados in your spring roll. That would be delicious. Like some avocados and some mango. Mm. Anyway. But that would be really good. So those are some great combinations as well. I love avocados. So I try to eat avocados several times a week. Um, whether I just eat it fresh with a little bit of salt and pepper, whether I put it with my eggs, whether I make me avocado toast, whether I make me um, actual guacamole. And with your guacamole, I know I love chips, but you can definitely pull out your vegetables. And that's what I do with my kiddos is that I'm like, okay, we can have some avocado and we're going to have some vegetables to go with it. And making fresh salsa is also good and using these vegetables. So really getting your kids in the habit of not reaching for a chip to go with the dip, but reaching for some veggies to go with the dip. Um, I know it's a mind shift, but honestly, again, when we start to feed our bodies good things, our bodies take care of us um, and our bodies appreciate it. And so in appreciating it, our bodies do more for us, right? We're mentally stronger, we're physically stronger, all of those things. 
Any other questions? I was looking to see if there's anything else that come up in the chat. Nope, I don't see anything else. Okay, so Rhonda, I thought we put, how much more time do we have to make sure we're? You have 20 minutes. Oh, okay. I was thought I had 45, so listen. Okay, so, all right, so then I'm gonna move on. We're gonna talk about something else. Okay, so now we have this wonderful stuff right here that we made. Let's talk about some other quick snacks. Now, these are some other snacks that I go to that are quick and easy and good. And one of the things that I love to do is take these same vegetables and I make them into what I call veggie pinwheels. So if you've never had a veggie pinwheel before, it's literally taking a tortilla wrap now, some of you are like, okay, they have the low carb tortilla wraps now, they have the high protein, they have the gluten free, they have the spinach tortilla wraps, they literally have any kind of wrap you want, right? So you basically take the same thing with your different vegetables that we have here, and you make yourself a veggie pinwheel. I do this with kids. So last year I taught at Willow Elementary School, and I made these veggie pinwheels, and the kids love them. These kids were K through third grade. I taught this class each, you know, individual grades. Like I came back week after week and did a different grade. And we did veggie pinwheels. They actually enjoyed them. We used um, fresh spinach. We used the peppers that we have here. We also used the fresh spinach, the peppers, and then we made a spread. Now, a smear, I should say. Now, it was not as healthy. We used cream cheese, but we put some fresh herbs in it. So again, I'm all about trying to find ways to put some fresh herbs in things so that kids get that, get all of these different flavors, natural flavors just built in. So we used some um, cilantro. We also put, of course, some garlic, but then we also put some parsley in there. And so these were things that the kids weren't necessarily introduced to. There's some parsley in there. So we have that nice green, pops of green within that cream cheese. And you can use low fat cream cheese. I wouldn't use no fat. And the reason why is because our bodies actually need fat. And so a lot of times what we think is, is that, oh, our bodies, you know, you know, this whole low fat thing is great for us, but our bodies actually need fat. So I say personally, what I do is, is that I have, full fat um, cream cheese, but I don't take as much of it, right? I don't eat as much. Um, so I think everything is in moderation. So anyway, we made that we made it up, some salt, pepper, garlic, mixed it together, and we smeared that on our tortilla shell, put our veggies on there, just how we did with our spring roll, and rolled it up and cut it. This is great, again, for lunch, it's something that'll keep for a day. You can make it the day before, make it a couple of days before, it'll keep in your refrigerator. You can pull it out, have it as a quick snack. Um, I'm always trying to find quick ways to like feed myself and feed myself healthy. So that's an easy, quick way. You can make up a lot of them at one time, um, which makes it nice. You can make some for you, make some for your spouse, make some for a friend or whoever else, right? So you can make some for different people. Um, not just yourself. So it's one of those quick, easy ones. So that's another thing that I love. Another thing I love to do with this that is really simple and quick and easy, um, and we can actually demo it right here, is that I love to just saute the vegetables. So I'll take onions, peppers, and um, different colors, because again, I like the colors, and just a little bit of salt and pepper, and I'll saute it with my onions. Love it. You can actually put a little bit of fresh garlic in it too if you want. My kids actually eat sauteed veggies as a snack. I know that seems kind of weird. I think they like the sauteed veggies more than the, than the raw veggies, but that's okay. At least they're still getting it. But they love it. And so, oh, mushrooms. We had a little bit of mushrooms, the peppers, and the onions. We mix all of that together. Now, my daughter, who's older, she started adding hot sauce. <laughs> So if you like hot sauce or something like that, or you can actually use the, um, oh, I don't have any more, I put it in my, uh, I put it in my mix, but you can use the chili, um, the um, chili garlic sauce that we use for the, um, for our butter, our peanut butter sauce. You can actually use that um, in your peppers, your, your veggie stir fry. Perfect. 
and you can put it over rice or you can put it over, um, you can actually make it into a salad. So I've done where I take like fresh salad, um, whether it's uh, spring spring lettuce or, I mean, not spring lettuce, but um, spring mix. And then I put my, my um, sauteed veggies over top. And I don't even need to have any type of dressing, salad dressing, because it tastes that good. So I'm gonna give this a try, try it out. So I'm going to saute up some veggies. And it's so simple. It takes like no time at all to do. And you're off to the races. So one of the things when I'm cutting, um, you guys are probably all pros and you didn't come on here for me to teach you how to cut. But since I'm cutting, I'll give you a couple quick cutting tips is that I always like to hold my hands like this. I say it's a bear claw. Um, and so it's not like this where they're tucked in. It's not like this. It's just like this straight up and down. And if I go like this, I'm never going to cut myself. See that? So whenever I'm cutting, this is how I cut. So I can go all the way up against my fingers. As you can see right here, I'm literally up against my fingers and I'm never going to cut myself because I've positioned my hands properly. So it feels unnatural at first, but when people start doing this in my class, they're like, oh my gosh, this is great. So it's a really great way for us to be able to, let's see, love the saute, but yes. And you know, I mean, honestly, because you put the olive oil in there, so by the time you add your olive oil, which again, you just need about a tablespoon at most. And then basically your veggies start to create moisture, right? Because as your, your veggies are cooking, the natural moisture of the water that's held in there starts to extract a bit. So really you have enough moisture. A lot of times we want salad dressing to kind of moisturize our salad, so to speak. I mean, give it flavor too, don't get me wrong, but it helps it from being dry. So when you have those veggies, that takes, that takes the dryness out. So I like to make bowls with them. Yes, make bowls. I make quinoa bowls. So this is another thing too. We got our quinoa right there. So you can take your veggies, you can add it to your quinoa, you can put your quinoa down, put your veggies, put some avocado like we talked about a little bit ago. Other ways you can make natural salad dressings is that you just take a little bit of olive oil or um, avocado oil, any type, or, or grapeseed oil, any type of oils that you like. And you just add a little bit, oh, black beans are good too. Um, and then you can just add, actually all types of beans are good, especially if you're not putting protein in there, like a, a meat protein in there. Having that bean substitute is really, really good for you. And black beans, you literally can just buy a can and put them right on your salad. I mean, you can warm them up if you want to, but really you can eat them right out the can. Okay, so that's another great thing too. Black beans are perfect. Um, and again, if you're trying to be quick, trying to do something easy, great idea. So anyway, I'm gonna cut again, like I said. Another quick tip about cutting is that I cut, if you ever, if you're watching me, I kind of do a slight angle so my knife isn't like this. My knife is kind of tilted slightly. So it just makes it a little easier for me to cut right through. And I'm looking at you guys and not looking at my knife because again, I position my hands correctly. So I don't have to worry about cutting my hands. Okay, so I'm gonna give that a nice little stir. And we'll get some, I'll get some olive oil that I could put into here and we're off to the races. So again, you can use onions, mushrooms. Mushrooms are so good. Um, there's a variety of different mushrooms that you can use that are totally great. So mushrooms are good. Just um, what other type of vegetables do I love to use inside of here? If you, in the summertime, zucchini, I have pieces of zucchini which is good. My kids actually really love zucchini, so we try to play it up a lot in the summer because we get it in our garden. Um, and then if you if you like, you can actually put some, tomato, uh, some uh, tomatoes in here as well, if you like tomatoes. So, oh, <laughs> somebody just said, yep, yeah, adding tomatoes to everything. Exactly. So, or if you don't want to cook your tomatoes, because some people don't like tomatoes warm, which I get, then you can basically take like the grape tomatoes or you can take those other tomatoes and you cut them in half, right? So we're talking about the, um, our veggie bowl or we're talking about our um, building our um, quinoa bowl. Then you have your quinoa at the bottom, your veggies right there that you saute, 
you have a fresh roll of your tomatoes, then you have another fresh roll of your avocados, and it's all good. It is all good, right? It's like, who needs uh, gluten? Who needs bread? Who needs this? Who needs that, right? Because this is good. <laughs> Yes, it is amazing. So those are some other ways. Now, let's talk about breakfast for a second, because that is an important, actually the most important meal of the day. And some of us skip it. Stop skipping breakfast. If you skip breakfast, stop it. Don't do that again. Stop, stop, stop. So now for breakfast. One of the things that I love for breakfast that is quick and easy is almond butter and apples. Now, you might not like almond butter and apples, that's fine, but that's a quick thing, at least to get me something going into my system, right? Because sometimes I'm off rushing really quickly, but I got my protein with my almond butter and I got my apples, so I have my nice fed, uh, fruit and I have a little bit of fiber because you got that fiber in the skin. Make sure you eat the skin of your veggies quick, right? It's also a quick snack as well. But another thing that you can do when you make things in advance is I love making those egg, um, I call them like egg souffles, but are like uh, quiche, uh, little mini quiches that are crustless quiches. You can do those as well. So you have your eggs going. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. So you have your, uh, your eggs, you put your eggs in there. And if you can't do eggs, you can do an egg substitute but or you can do mostly egg whites. So that's another thing too. I usually will do one yolk for two whites. So one yolk for two whites. Um, and so you can have your egg whites in there or, your, or just do you know a mixture, kind of how I do a combo. And then you put, again, all your fresh vegetables, put those into the eggs. A little bit of dairy, if you want a little bit of dairy, um, you can use that, uh, oat milk we talked about a minute ago, or you can use just a little bit of cow's milk. Honestly, I've started moving my family to uh, Fairlife, if you're familiar with Fairlife milk. It is, um, I feel like it's a little bit better for you. It's higher in protein, um, and it doesn't have as much uh, of the carb content in it, so a little bit lower in carb, and it's high in protein. And it's a really, really good um, milk product. And some people who actually have allergies to milk or have intolerances to milk. I'm going to say allergies. I'm going to say intolerances. It would be correct. Have intolerances to milk can tolerate their life milk. It's ultra pasteurized. Um, if anybody's ever had it or know or like it, put it in the comments. I want to hear about it. Um, but I love it. And so I'm going to transition my family to do, to start eating that. My kids are still on the borderline of really accepting it. They like their regular milk, but I'm trying to transition them because it's also less uh, uh, hormones and all those different things that are, are, are not so good for you. So the fair life is so much better in that regard. So um, yeah, has anybody ever had fair life? I'm not seeing anybody probably think just yet. But so with that, okay, I have not. You have to try it. It's fair life. It's in a blue, I use the, I buy the blue one. It's in a blue, like half gallon container. Um, that's all we use. Exactly. So someone said fair life. Pro yes, the protein shakes. Oh my gosh. Those are a game changer. The protein shake that you've never had, the fair life protein shakes. They are so, their yogurt's good too. They're so good. And again, they're high in protein. So that's really good for you. So you're getting that dairy, but you're getting that high protein as well, which is really good. So we have, so going back to what I was going to say for breakfast, you put a little bit of that in your eggs and you put them into your cupcake pan, right? Or your muffin pan, bake them off. Then I freeze them. And I do this for my kids. I freeze them and then we pop them out one at a time for breakfast. That's a really quick breakfast. You can just grab it, eat one in the car while you're heading to work or wherever you have to go and grab some berries. So I always keep berries in my refrigerator. I always have blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, some type of berries, strawberries. We always have berries because berries are very, very good for you. So always make sure you have some type of berries um, if you like berries, because berries are definitely good. They have the antioxidants. They're going to help us with our body, our skin, all of that. Um, 
So yes, so that's what I like to do. So I'll put a little bit of that fair life into my eggs, mix it together with my veggies. If you wanna add a little bit of cheese, you can. Again, I feel like everything you can have, but just have it in moderation. Uh, unless you have dietary restraints, which some people do, and I understand that. But in general, my rule of thumb is, is that when I deprive myself of one food group or one certain thing, then it's like, I go ham on something else. I'm like, oh, I want all of this. Or, you know, I actually end up eating it secretly, right? And I'm like gouging because I missed it for so long. So I try with me to have balance. And I think that's the most important thing and we learned nothing else today. If we're gonna reset, recharge and refocus, we gotta have balance. Balance, I, I love that, Nikki. Now. I want to make sure your vegetables aren't overcooked over there. You've been on a roll. I have been on a roll. Actually, they're still not too bad. They're still not too bad. See, they're not lit yet. Okay. Well, let me check the chat here for you and see if we have any other questions. This is great information. Um, those egg rolls look so delicious. And um, I can't wait to try to make them. Everybody um, that registered will be getting a copy of the recipe for the egg roll. So um, check your email. You'll be getting a copy of the uh, recipe as well as uh, what else will they get in the email, you guys? The toolkit that we um, received from um, Dr. Hannah and any other items that we share with you today. So thank you so much, Nikki. And it's called Sweet Encounters. It's downtown Lansing. It's here in the capital city, correct? Um, yes. uh, if they want gluten-free uh, cure cakes, uh, cookies, uh, vegetarian, vegan items, you have it. You can order online or you can go from the, to the capital city business yeah. in person. Thank you so much, Nikki. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy I was able to spend time with you guys. So have a great day. And I do want to hear, some people said they're going to tell Rhonda. So I want you to try it. And I want you to tell Rhonda how well you liked it, okay? And then tell me how you switched it up. Because if you did some creative things that I didn't do, I want to hear about it so then I can add it to it. Right. And 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 real quick, Nikki, you did tell me you, you often, or perhaps you would consider going to schools and doing cooking classes or virtually entering into some school districts and work sites and helping out with cooking classes. So that would definitely um, uh, be a great way to bring a nutrition to a work site wellness program. Absolutely. Like I said, the, one of the elementary schools here, I started doing that as a program for them last year. Um, and it was phenomenal. The kids really enjoyed it. This, these are inner city kids, this Title One school. And they, some of them said they like their, like this better than what their mom makes. I said, well, don't go home and tell your mom next. I don't want her to come back and, you know, be upset with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Great. Well, thank you so much. Yes. Have a great day, everyone. Yes, yes, yes.